All right, we are back on the Medicine Podcast. Welcome. My name is Mimi, and I got my love, my king here with me. What is going on, everybody? We are so fired up today because we have a longtime friend. It's been a long time coming to mm-hmm. get Angie Lee on the Medicine Podcast. Welcome to the Medicine. I'm so freaking excited, and I'm so grateful that you guys sent me this, whatever this is in here. Yeah. We're going to find out because I want to know what it is. When you yeah. made it, I want to hear everything. Cause you know me, I love products. I love wellness. Yeah. This is like my favorite thing to do in the world is geek out and try products. So I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah. So we, we uh, had this, you know, fun idea for, for this interview and for the episode, we knew that if anyone was game, it's going to be Angie Lee. Cause she's always down for a fun time, always down for the weird. And so we sent her a sample of our mushy love latte and she has not tried it yet. We were like, Let's do it live. Let's do it in real time and have you try during the interview. And so she she got her little mushy mix. Now, what what kind of milk did you mix it with? So I actually used almond milk. Okay. Mm. Perfect. Perfect. Almond milk. And it was interesting because when you first said mushies, I thought you meant psilocybin. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. I was like, oh, we're about to. We're about that's to later in the product later. line. Later that's in the later. product line. Yeah. This is non-psychedelic mushrooms, everybody. No, right. It is. Okay. It is chaga and tremella. So we got the gut health, immunity, hydration, beauty, and then some other goodies in there that really. Uh, well, I won't tell you what it tastes like. I'll, I'll let you try it. But um, yeah, maybe give it a little swirl just in is case it's caffeine settled. In no, no, no caffeine. caffeine. And oh, no. Oh, I thought there was caffeine. Caffeine free, no. baby. Let's go. Yep. I was like nervous. I was like, oh, it's already two here. <laughs> That's a grandma. No, I- no, I knew that you don't do well with caffeine. So I was like, I know this is going to be perfect for her. So it's basically all mushrooms and some adaptogens. Yeah. So it's got uh, lacuma and slippery elm. Um, we got some cinnamon. We got some sea salt in there. What else? We no have stevia, there? no monk yeah. fruit, no natural uh, flavors. And when did you guys thing? make this? Uh, like it's over been the, like, like the last two years. It's been a long yeah. conversation. Oh, it's a passion. It's a, it's a baby. We're mixing in our kitchen and then finally got this formulation. Perfect. Yeah, exactly what say, we want. So a long time. Yes. Yes, they do. As you know. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Give it a try. Right. She, she give it a little swirl and, uh, <laughs> I love how I'm like nervous now. Like why <laughs> so much pressure. All right, guys, here goes some psilocybin. Just kidding. <laughs> 17 grams. <laughs> right. Ooh. I like the saltiness. Oh, good. Yeah. You know what this is like? Mm, yeah. This is way better than like, oh, yeah. I can't say brand names probably. I shouldn't talk shit. <laughs> mushroom it's elixir your, your XYZ. You know, the famous mushroom brand. Everyone drinks it. It's very popular, but I just think it tastes like shit. This actually yep. is very good. <laughs> This is better than something that rhymes with for schumatic. Hold on. <laughs> she yeah. said it, not us. Yeah. You know what? It's creamier. And I like the undertone of like this saltiness. It's like, a, yeah. it's like a salty chocolate bar, but like melted. Yeah. We like to say like a liquid cinnamon roll, Shit. little, little cinnamon really in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that's it's... great. That's great feedback. We yeah. weren't, we weren't nervous. Um, wow. What is killer. that that I really like in this? I'm <laughs> There's I mean, something it, tasty that I really like. So Lakuma and uh, Slippery Elm Bark both have a super like nutty kind uh, of like caramely, caramely taste to them. Nutty. Yeah. 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 I've been uh, I've been lately mixing mine with raw milk. I'm on the we're on the raw train now. So like I've been doing raw cow milk. We both have and uh, mixing it with that and raw milk, you know, is like whole milk is like super creamy and uh, that's how I've been loving it, but it is good with, with almond as well. It's good as like a, like a, um, when you mix it with coffee as almost like a creamer also. Mm-hmm. And so if you did want caffeine, you can mix it just with a coffee and it, it makes it just way better. Gives it like a, a cinnamon roll twist. This is like a cinnamon roll. The salt is what makes it, it like brings it all together. Yeah. Could I do this? So I don't drink coffee. So would this be something I drink in the morning, just throughout the day, whenever Any, I want to just anytime, feel... anytime. Yeah. Really more so for the benefits for my immune yeah. system and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And also like, it, I like it on toast, like, cin- like cinnamon toast. So it's you, actually you put like straight. butter and then you can kind of sprinkle it on toast and you've got that, you know, mm-hmm. that very nostalgic mm-hmm. cinnamon toast crunch vibe. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You can drink it. any. I, I, we envision it with, you know, people who, who either drink a couple cups of coffee and then want something later in the day. Sometimes you just want something warm and rich, but you don't mm. want another cup of coffee. So it can be that, or if you don't drink coffee like you, Angie, um, then it can be a, a just straight substitute. All organic. Uh, Tremella mushroom is, is a freaking beast that nobody talks about. No like, one. Super- Tremella. Tremella. Super. It's actually, um, you know, the Organifi product glow. Mm-hmm. That it's one of the benefits of glow, which is like super hydrating. It's really good for beauty. I mm-hmm. think it retains like, yeah, it holds four times the amount of 25, 25. Okay. Wow. 25. It holds 25 times its weight in water for your cells. So that's why it's so great for hydration and beauty, because we know that youthful glow, that plumpness has to do with your hydration levels and the, the basically metabolism of your cells and cells as you know, function so much better when they have their proper nutrients and hydration and everything. So it is the beauty mushroom that no one talks about, but was way back in like uh, Chinese dynasty. It was reserved for the empress and she was like known for her beauty basically. I love that there's no caffeine in this. So I could just drink a few of these a day. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's totally safe and fine and probably very minimal in calories, right? Yeah. Yeah, It's it's like like, uh, 40 calories. Uh, low, low sugar. It's got maple sugar. So organic maple sugar, all organic ingredients. Um, yeah. And we, we very intentionally avoided natural flavors, um, Mm -hmm. and stevia and monk fruit. It's, those are great. And and we have them in a ton of our products, no shame to them, but just like in large amounts are gut disrupting, Mm -hmm. um, natural flavors are somewhat mysterious as far as what you can actually put in there. Uh, And so, yeah. And that's really what took us so long because we, we Mm. had this idea of like, we wanted to taste caramely, nutty cinnamon roll type. And unless you use natural flavors, like natural caramel flavor, well, no one really knows what that is. And so that's why the formulation took so long. We're like, we need a combination that is going to deliver the taste experience that we want, but Mm. don't have any of the extra excipient and fillers and garbage that, you know, other products or elixirs use to get that sort of cinnamon roll caramely taste. Oh my gosh. You got to call it the cinnamon roll. Well, it is. It's a cinnamon swirl is the flavor. So yeah. Mushy love latte cinnamon swirl. Oh my gosh. And you know, you know, and for y'all listening, it's okay if you don't want to do this, but you could add some psilocybin to this on your days where you want to microdose. And this is like, this is really good. Honestly, I'm, I'm being honest. I would tell you if this is like, this good. is really good. Like I want to order this right now. This is really good. And I'm, I'm sent a lot of like different like cacaos and elixirs yeah, and like, I'm sure. blood water. And like, there's a lot of people trying to kind of get into yeah. that space of like non-caffeinated cacao drinks. And like, they just all have like a, such a weird aftertaste mm-hmm. and it's yeah. hard to nail it, but this doesn't yeah. have a weird funky aftertaste. And it also feels very, um, this is kind of cheesy, but it feels very groundy and it feels earthy. Like it yeah. tastes like a clean taste. It doesn't feel like there's uh, a lot of, st- a lot of fake sweeteners in it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. there's actually, we didn't mention this, but we have a full gram of mushrooms in there. So there's other brands out there. There's a lot of medicinal mushroom elixirs and lattes and blends, but a lot of them only use like two to 300, maybe like 500 max. So we have double the amount of the brand that you mentioned before rhymes with Schmore Schmigmatic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have probably no one who works for them is listening. Yeah. If you are, it's okay. You know, there's something no. for everyone. Yeah, no- nothing but love for for them. Ground, yeah. groundbreaking, getting people. Yeah, they, they the open the doors for much right. talked about. So yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so glad you love it. Yes. Well, and, enjoy uh, the rest of the show, and and we'll now we'll we'll get on to. Yeah. Thank you for being. Thank you for being. <laughs> thank you. I'm like this shit is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the episode. Okay. Thank bye. you. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, so good. No, we're we're super super. Yes. I don't really yeah. do mushrooms enough. So this is like really good. Cause I, um, yeah. I don't, I microdose a little bit here and there and I haven't done it in a bit, but, um, I don't play around with a lot of mushrooms because my first experience with them was, um, that company. So, and it just tasted gross. So I've always kind of had like a weird kind of fear mm-hmm. now of like lion's yeah. mane and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. That's the thing is like, we didn't want it to taste like mud. We yeah. wanted it to yeah. be like something that people look forward to drinking, yeah. not just drinking it because you know, it's good for you. I'm going to steal the other packet. So Clay doesn't see it now. Yeah. I, was gonna- <laughs> we can send you more, girl. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll supply you. Don't, don't worry. Oh, yep. Yeah. But thank you so much for, for engaging in the fun with us. It was, it, we knew that uh, you'd be game. So we appreciate you so much. And uh, we have a long list of questions because you're such a dynamic 
funny, inspirational, uh, human. And, uh, there's, there's so much of you, um, that we want to dive deeper into that kind of sounds weird, but, um, <laughs> we're just excited to, to talk are, to you. They already probably want to dive it. deep into you. Angie. <laughs> they probably already think this is like a paid ad in the beginning. And I probably, yeah, right. it. that was actually a genuine reaction. They're probably like, Oh, this Jake probably. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh yeah. But we, we're getting serious now. Okay. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, thank you for, for joining us today. We're excited to talk to you. And uh, we know this is all just divine timing because we've been talking to you about getting on, you know, coming on our show for like a year. Yeah. And uh, we're excited to have you. And uh, we'll start with the question that we ask every guest who comes on the medicine. And that is, what do you love in your life? What aspect of your life do you love so much that you wish you could gift it to every human? <sighs> so good. It's such a good question because I feel like I feel like the answer to that is going to change dependent upon the season of my life. Uh, I hope one day it's my kids and things like that, unless they drive me crazy and I don't like them, then it won't be my kids. <laughs> but for now, I would say the thing in my life that I'm really loving is, you know, the medicine. So, so to say, so to speak is, is comedy and really expressing that gift more. And I think more than ever, we're at a time where people need that. They need that medicine. Mm-hmm. And the last few years have just been so heavy and intense. And I think levity is the secret sauce. And, and that's my desire and my hopes that I can continue to, to bring that to people and, and the intention that it's a pause. It's a pause for people to just feel happy, yeah. even if it's just for five seconds of watching me do a stupid video. So I, I'm really setting that intention of like, what does that look like? And stepping into that more. And, and that's what's lighting me up right now, currently in this season. But, you know, that could change in a few weeks. So. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I love that. And it's, it's perfect. I mean, I got to know you when you were, I think you were, you know, crashing some Organifi parties back in the day and, you know, we'd be at like Drew's house or whatever. And, and that's one of the first things that stood out. I was like, Oh my God, this, this girl is, is hilarious. And, and just bringing comedy into the scene and bringing energy into the scene. Uh, maybe for our listeners, could you give us a little summary of like, you've been doing so many things over the years, like uh, fitness, business, health and wellness, um, all the, you know, you have your own, uh, podcast as well as your own brand. What would you define and how would you summarize your, your work in the world today? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question because I've gotten to a point where I don't know if I have one answer for it. And I don't know if that's a, that's a good thing or it's a, <laughs> a bad thing, but it's funny when someone says, what do you do? Because now being so multi-passionate, I find that it's hard to put it into one word, but I feel like maybe that's always been the the goal is like, I've never wanted it to just be like dentist. <laughs> you know, I've always yeah. wanted it to be something very uh, diverse. And so, yeah, you know, I see myself as a creator, you know, I became an entrepreneur because I liked creating content. I started creating wellness content and, and fitness content in college, started the podcast, have done live events, Mike, my brother and I own a wellness brand. So all of it's been, uh, you know, as a byproduct of building community and creating content. So at my core, a lot of people will say, oh, she's an entrepreneur. And, and I am, of course, I work for myself. I always have in these different facets, but I see myself as a creator. I just love to create content. I love to be creative. I like to express myself in creative ways and it kind of ebbs and flows. So for a while it was, you know, wellness, and then it was business and marketing. And now it's kind of a merge of both. And now I'm in this interesting season where in full transparency, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what that is. That's next. That is the next thing that excites me to share, but it all started with, with content creation and my obsession with building a community and ultimately helping people feel good as cheesy as that is, but it was in, in wellness and then it was in business and now exploring that into comedy and bringing wellness back in again. So it's been this interesting ride, but I'm, I'm finally at a place where I feel like I'm trying to merge a few things and not just have one niche anymore after doing that for so long. So yeah, that's the season I'm in now, but I consider myself a content creator yeah, and, and speaker. And I've done a bunch of different things. Like I said, physical and digital and events and speaking and podcasting. But ultimately I think that's really what my, my goal is. And that's how I see myself, but I, I don't know how other people. See it. I, I freaking love that because like the universe operates in uh, spirals. It operates in vibration. It operates in this sort of rotational ebbs and flows. ebbing and flowing yeah. type mentality. And, and I think when we niche and, and stay in that niche too long, like it's a recipe for burnout. 
And so that sort of like natural flow and rhythm of life, even if, even if you do like circle back around to something that you've previously been passionate about, it might be from a much more refreshing mm-hmm. uh, headspace than, than had you just stuck to your lane for eternity. Yeah. It also like it, it provides space for you to breathe and grow <laughs> and evolve. And I think sometimes I've certainly, you know, I'm not immune to this, but I think sometimes whether whatever your degree is or whatever your specialty is or whatever people come to you for, you get kind of locked in to that. And I think when that happens, um, sometimes that liberation or that like freedom to create like where your heart is, is taking you. And I think sometimes people lock themselves in a box of like, Oh no, I do this. I am this. And that's something that we talk a lot about on our show is like letting go of labels. And I love that. You're like, I don't even know what to call myself. I have the same, like, I'm like, I'm a dental hygienist by degree, but I'm not, I don't practice clinically anymore. Does that make me a dental hygienist? I don't really know. I'm a yeah. podcaster, but we also have an immune supplement. And like, I don't really know what I am. I just follow my heart and, and, uh, and, uh, it, it works. <laughs> yeah. You're a creator at the core, you know, and, and, and I know the word influencer gets a bad rap sometimes, but I, I like that word. I think if done correctly, being an influencer in a, in a positive way is such a great career and, and such a great gift. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. And I like it. I love sharing things I love. I love sharing my life with people. I love oversharing. That's just always been very natural to me. It's like, Hey guys, I'm doing an enema. Here's the yeah. Like I just, there is no sense of like it being weird for me. Yeah. So it's always been a kind of natural career for me, but now it's sitting in. Yeah. Like I literally used to teach niche, which is so funny and ironic. And I'm in this place of like, I don't want to be in a box. I don't want to, yeah. to have a niche anymore. And I've worked so hard to hopefully not have that. And I, I don't know if I can teach those same things that I even taught in 2017, 2018, like I might stick a pencil in my eyeball. It's just, I did it so much and I just, I've changed so much. So who I am now, and maybe you guys feel the same who I am now, even as of, you know, 32, when I was 27, 28, I'm so different. And it wasn't even that long ago. So I'm like crazy how much I've changed in three years and my passions have changed and how I want to express myself has changed. And that's scary, but I'm also trying to just like embrace this Mm -hmm. shift or pivot. Totally. I, I'm, I'm the CFO at Organifi. I'm a freaking, you know, certified public accountant by, by trade. And, and that's the last thing I sort of want to do yeah. in my free time. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I completely get it. And I think like even just reframing like niche and that sort of like grind work hard mentality into just craft, like it's your yeah. craft, it's your, it's your creation and it's okay to fine tune your craft, but it, as long as it's, it's still serving you. And those moments of exploration will be clear if you're in tune mm-hmm. with your body and you're conscious to, you know, the feedback that the world is giving you. And like when those things come up, I think is, is more of the lesson than uh, just, just, you know, becoming an expert in a lane is like when that feedback from the universe, maybe it's from your body, maybe it's from, you know, your close community starts to show up and, and, and suggests a nudge to something else. Listen to it, man, lean into it. And it's okay to cycle back around if this thing resurfaces. But for the time being, like the cues and the nudges and the flirtation from the the world around you is is yeah. all the time. So like keep an open eye and and an ear towards those little nudges. Yeah, I think the 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 key phrase that you used is if it's still serving you, and if something is pulling you in this direction, but your identity is keeping you here, that's a good indicator that it's it's and you feel this sort of like pull and push and should I shouldn't I, like. It, it, that's a good indicator that it might not be serving your, you and your future self and who you're, you know, walking into and who you're trying to become. So I love that you are such a great example of allowing yourself permission. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because I think a lot of times, especially in the creator economy, the creator space, and I used to teach this. So part of me feels bad about teaching it, but part of me feels like there's a season for this for certain creators, especially in the beginning, but you teach people to have a niche and what does your audience want? And what do they want it market research? And what do they want? And what do they want it? You guys know with physical products, market research, yeah. market research, and you're so in your head with the numbers and the analytics, and you become so obsessed with this game that you forget what you like to create. And I started all this because I was 19 years old. I hated my college classes and I was bored and I just wanted to share some cool tips with women on the internet. Like this started from love and passion and just yeah creativity. And then over time, what happens is 12 years later, I woke up seven, eight months ago. And I was like, I don't like parts of this. Like, what am I doing? I don't want to create what they want me to create. I actually need to have a season where I create because I freaking just love to create this piece of content, Mm -hmm. or I think it's funny, or I think it's interesting. And indirectly, what you notice is more people do like it then because they can see that you're being authentic and they can feel that. And that's contagious. But I feel like there is a season where every creator, whether this is six months of a year or 
after a few years in, when you've built some momentum and you have an audience or at any point where you just need to create for you, not mm-hmm. for the likes or the analytics or the algorithm, like screw that, even just for yeah. a week of your life, like what would you create if nobody was liking it or there was no sort of validation from it? And I started to ask myself that question and some of it was different than what I was doing. So that's what scared the shit out of me. Cause I was like, Oh my God, what am I doing? Because they want me to do it. Like the strangers mm-hmm. on the internet. Yeah. Like, yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, actually I, the question's coming up for me. Like you were early in the, you know, influencer space and, and yeah. you're like literally an OG in the influencer space. And, you know, we see it, we're in it to some degree. And there are so many copycat Angie Lee's like there are so many people dress like you sound like you try to try to look like you does that bother you at all does that come up as like oh wow this is really cool that that I've made this much of an impact that there's people maybe consciously and subconsciously just sort of like stepping as a fast follower into this lane that I've really created does that bother you at all is it inspiration for you um what's your what's your feeling on kind of the everybody's an influencer that's a really good question no one's ever asked me (laughs) Oh my God. It's interesting. I don't know. I guess I don't see it because I don't follow a lot. I'm like in a phase yeah. where I like put my blinders on and I just go and I only watch like three people's stories a day because if I take in too much, it's just my creativity dies. So I'm in the season of like unfollow everything and just like, what do you want or what are you inspired by? So I don't see a lot of it, but if I do, usually it's in a very, like, it makes me happy. Like I want them to, that's what I'm creating is like a cool community that they're like, you know, like right now I have a little smiley face in my nails. So an example is like, tag me if you go get your nails done the same as me so I like that I like when my community is like let's all do stuff together let's be baby grandmas like let's do these weird (laughs) things together let's do enemas together like whatever it is we're doing so I like that community feel but I guess yeah if I I saw someone totally trying to be me the reason it would upset me not because I would care I'm like cool go for it it's not gonna be sustainable because it's not you but yeah yeah, it's if somebody like tries to use the same like jokes or sense of humor then it is a little weird when you could tell the girl's not naturally funny or like that. And you're kind of like, dude, that's just not you. Like yeah. Yeah. just be you. People want you to actually be you. That's mm-hmm. what people are attracted to. They're not attracted to a specific type of personality online. You'll notice the people who usually have the community or have some sort of influence is um, they're so radically and unapologetically authentic. That's the secret. It's yeah. not like they had a formula. You know, I don't, I don't wake up and think, how can I be myself today? So they like me. Like right. I don't, yeah. Yeah. there's no system. There's no four step process to yeah, being five myself. steps to, to being yourself. Right. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. You just, you just give less shits and you just realize that <laughs> it's exhausting to pretend. Right. So yeah, I do yeah. think that that's when it makes me sad is I'm like, oh, that girl's trying to like, that's just not her style. That's weird that she's trying to be that way. And I've done that too. It's like, oh, I think I need to be like that girl. Cause she seems cool, whether it's like fashion or just anything. And then you're you're like, this isn't me. What am I doing? Yeah. You guys know that even as a kid, oh, yeah. we would do this. We would mimic people. And so yeah, I think that's common, especially in the influencer world. Everybody's showing the same like poses and the same pics and the same, you know, trends and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get better at it and, and constantly think like, what can I do that no one else is doing right now? Yeah. I like to, I like to think that maybe that's crazy, but <laughs> sometimes yeah. I, ask that. I love that. It reminds me of the quote that uh, Will says all the time. Our friend Will uh, creativity is seeing what everyone else has seen, but thinking what no one else has thought. And that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am. I'm like in a season of that so much right now. I'm like, oh, what would I, what could I do that would be different and fun? And like, you don't see it a lot. And like, I think the world needs it right now, but I also, it also sets my soul on fire. Like always kind of blending those together, I think is the secret sauce because of course it'd be easy tomorrow to just mimic what another girl is doing. But you could take two girls, the exact same, similar look, same kind of account. And it just, they would do different if one's, one is doing it out of a place of authenticity and one's not. Yeah. It's just, yeah. mm-hmm. you can't, you can't really mimic that long. So people can yeah. smell the fakeness. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. And that's when you're giving, giving people the best of you is when it's actually you for sure. Yeah. Um, changing the subject here a little bit, but you know, something that I've, I've, I've listened to your podcast and of course followed you for a long time and, and hung out with you, but um, something I've never heard you talk about, and I hope you're cool going here, but what are you, your views on like God and the divine? And, you know, do you, do you, um, do you kind of, uh, subscribe, yeah, subscribe to any sort of religion or any sort of philosophy or anything like that? I thought this was, I thought you were going to ask me a different question. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> one that might get censored because you know censor censorship's crazy right now for content. So I was like, oh, let's go there. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we we'll can go for, there if you want to, but we'll save that for a different day. I don't know if your audience is like that, but um, <laughs> so funny. I was like, oh god, she's really going to ask me the the viewer right now. <laughs> we can get um, there. Like, yeah. This like, podcast is real. Um, yeah, you know, I it's interesting. My relationship with God is getting uh, the older I'm getting, the stronger it's getting. So I feel like for me, I, I call it Gus, like God, universe, source. Mm-hmm. I have a connection and I have a relationship with something that's bigger than me. And I'm wanting to build it even more, but I've never had um, a specific routine or organization of it. Like I, I've gone to church, but I didn't really feel like that's where I feel him the most. I feel it in nature. I feel it on walks. Honestly, I have felt God as cheesy and woo woo as this is to say, um, so Austin, Texas to say too, but I felt it the most on, on mushrooms or microdosing or plant medicine experiences where I'm like, wow, we're not alone. Like this is such a cool experience that we're in. And I, I do have an interesting, funny relationship with source or whatever you want to call it. And that I I feel like, uh, it's just a game. Like we're here to play in this almost like a matrix. And that's why I probably don't take life so seriously. Cause I think that we're here to play and explore. So yeah, I'm I'm working on it more, but I, I grew up going to private school, but it never really resonated. And my parents, I'm really grateful that they allowed me to find that connection on my own versus forcing me to go to a building every Sunday and say, this is the way it needs to be done in order to have a connection with God. And that never resonated really. And so I just grew up always questioning and I'm still questioning. I don't have the answers, but, um, lately I've been trying to even get more, more into it. Like, what does that mean for me? And what, what is, I don't know. Even as a creative, I think the most creative people in the world, like have a connection to something bigger than themselves in order to be really, really creative. So yeah, that's, I'm in it. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what the answers are. I don't have a name for what I am, but I guess you'd call it spiritual, right? Spiritual. Yeah. 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 I I totally get it. It Resonates deeply with me. Like we grew up evangelical Christians, uh, Christian high school, all the youth groups, that whole world never felt right. And I got to the point where it was like, I just turned into a scientific materialist, uh, you know, atheist, if you will, uh, in certain spots until mushrooms. And then I just had a blast off experience, uh, in my late twenties and was the same, the same takeaway where it was like, there is something larger than myself. There is, there is something metaphysical that is outside of the individual self. And it's weirdly like everything Mm -hmm. that's alive. Yeah. It's the it's the sacred geometry of this succulent that I've found myself staring at for nine straight minutes. This leaf that has so many lessons to teach me. And it, and it's it's the you know staring into your partner's eyes for longer than sixty seconds and realizing that there's a there's a third entity, there's a power, there's this connection. Yeah. And it's it's those moments where I'm like, God, you yeah. know, it's like, yeah. is that is that you? Is that what, is that what it's supposed to be? Cause it feels just so much more profound than just this matrix experience, yeah. this, this game experience that we're kind of in these meat suits playing. Yeah. I feel like mushrooms are, are a portal, you know, and it, it kind of like dissolves the veil between the 3d and whatever else there is. And, and, uh, speaking, you know, you said it beautifully. Um, it, it, it's like mushrooms kind of like let you kind of see behind the veil a little bit. But for me also the the first experience that we had or that I had that was significant was I actually felt it inside myself. And I had never felt that before. Like, you know, by having a conversation with my soul, I literally heard slash felt something inside of me, uh, you know, speak to me and like in full sentences. And I was like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. you're not going to believe this. This sounds wild and crazy, but this is what I just heard slash felt inside of myself. And it was the first time that I actually heard my soul. And, uh, it also was kind of like simultaneously like, Oh, that's God, you know, and that's the intelligence. That's a creativity. That's the, um, innate love that exists within us all, all the time. Not saying like I myself am God, but if we are all little capsules of the divine, like it would make sense that we would be able to tune in and really like feel that inside of us when we're still and quiet, you know, now we might not need mushrooms to feel it. I, I, I don't, I can feel it, but uh, certainly that was a, a powerful experience. And it, it sounds like something that maybe you've experienced too. Yeah. I mean, I just, and maybe a lot of it's for us to be able to rationalize this experience and not have fear of the unknown of after this. Right. And I think there's a huge part of it that 
is that, but it's like, there's no way, there's no way there's not something that orchestrated this and is orchestrating this. Like, there's just no way you look at childbirth. Like I'm watching all the videos right now of all these crazy home births, like to prep my mind for the craziest moment of my life. I'm like, Whoa, like who did that? And then yeah. even when you're not microdosing, just to be able to look at a flower outside and just see like the beautiful intricacies of the colors and the vibrancy. And you're like, who the fuck did that? Yeah. Like, yeah. Just like, who did that? I don't know. So then you get this sense of like this awe. And I think that awe is the sense of like, whoa, this is all like, I think I'm in control, but I'm not. And so, yeah, yeah I'm in a season now where I'm like, wow, this is a really cool time to develop that relationship more. And I don't know what that looks like because I don't see myself necessarily going to a church. I don't know if that's where everybody has a connection. And I think that's really sad that a lot of people think that's the only way to have a connection yeah. to God. It's like, no, you could have it through your community and, 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 and nature or in so many different ways to connect, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't yeah. have to be this one structured way. So that's definitely what I know for sure, but I'm still working on it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, no, I totally love it. And, and, you know, something we've been talking about really is like, the permission to evolve, the permission to change, the permission to change your mind. And uh, we love to just bring this kind of dialogue up on our show because I think it is important to have freedom uh, to change. And so curious for you, what's a significant moment where you did change your mind, you know, recently? What, you know, what was it and and what led to that maybe significant change in the way you thought about something? Mm, that's juicy. Wow. This is some deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> some dang shit um i mean the comedian me wanted to when you immediately asked me what 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 do i believe in i should have just been like mormon i have nine husbands <laughs> someone listening like what um yeah you know oh man talk about what a what a relevant topic because uh I'll, I'll keep it this it's pretty surface level but i think this will resonate very deeply with people and this is something that um i think is very t- just timely for the last few years of it being so divisive I think sometimes the answer is somewhere in the middle and it's nuanced. And I used to never think that way. So my, I was very, you know, black and white with things, A or B, like this is the way it is. And even politically and just with so many things. And I'm kind of now a little bit like, I want to see both sides. And then sometimes I find that the answer is somewhat kind of in the, in the middle and like media and things want things to be so extreme. You're either so far right or so far left. And it's like, interesting that I've met so many people recently and I've been trying to keep my mind more open. And I've had interesting conversations of people that think very differently on some things and realizing that we ultimately all kind of want the same thing. We all want freedom. We all want love. Like it's like, it kind of comes down to the same shit. We're just going out about it in different ways. I realized like a lot of times some people are kind of in the middle. Like even if someone voted differently than me or, or one way, they actually believe in still a lot of same similar stuff in this aspect. So you're like, Oh, people aren't so like robotic, like we're ever evolving humans. And I wish that was portrayed, but it's not, it's like, Oh, if your neighbor thinks a little differently on this one topic, then you guys must disagree on every topic. It's like, eh, not necessarily. Yeah. So that's what I've, I've really been practicing on. I feel like that was what 30 to 32 was for me is, is being more open-minded and less judgmental about that and realizing that um, my, my lesson from God, universe, source, Gus has been yes. uh, the and sign, which is crazy because I have the and sign tattooed on my mm. forearm and I got it three, four years ago, not really knowing. I thought it meant abundance. Like you can have more and, 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 but now I'm like, a lot of times I feel like the answer is, is both or, or yeah. it's lost. So that's like what I've been practicing is like, stop being such an extremist of like everything in my life. Like it has to be this or all this. And even the niche thing, right? Like I got to do all of this or all of this. It's like, what if I'm kind of a mix of a few of those things. Like you said, even when you introduced me, it's like, what if that's okay to be the end sign instead of like, she's all of this one type of thing, or she only has this one job. It's like, I don't know if I could just be one thing and maybe that's okay. So it's interesting that this, this tattoo is really meant different things for me now, as I'm, as I'm just growing up, I'm like, Oh shit. So that's kind of where I've been changing my mind, I guess. (laughs) Oh, I love that. And it's, it's a, it's a ninja life skill these days. And what you're saying is so important because you're starting with yourself. You're not telling other people to do what you're doing. You're starting with yourself. But by default, when we take those practices on, when we actually embody, like maybe it's a little bit of this and a little bit of this at both at the same time. And maybe there is some paradox and some gray and two things can be true at the same time. When you allow that into your space and you truly embody it in your life, 
you you're able to um, provide more compassion and understanding for other people in your life. And yeah. that's how that's how we come together more and, and be yeah. more unified. Well, and I think we talk about it all the time when, you know, we're working, we, t- we have a lot of relationship type content around here. And, and when we end up working with people, we, we are often, when it comes to argument and relationship, it's like, it's more than the literal thing that's being talked about. It's the thing behind the thing. And we, we reference this all the time. What is the thing behind the thing? But I think the same uh, applies to the times that we're in now. Yeah. A lot of the differences are literal, you know, 3d world differences, but the thing behind those things is actually love. Mm-hmm. And so you actually have alignment and similarity because the, the foundation is love. I do think that there's the thing behind the thing that's fear and shame and guilt as well. And that's where for me, it's like, hold up. That's where we are having differences because my decision-making is, is truly from a place of abundance and love. And I think mine or yours might be from scarcity and fear and guilt and shame. But I think more often than not, we have consistency in the thing behind the thing that's driving our decisions. And so even if those decisions end up looking a little bit different, I do think the foundation of them is oftentimes similar. We just want to be freaking happy and, and, healthy. and healthy. Yeah. And, yeah. and the way that we go about that is, is different for all of us. And that's what freedom is. Hashtag free will. And uh, we all have different life lessons. Like we're all here. You know, you mentioned like, it feels like a game. It feels like we talk about that all the time. We're like this level of the fucking game is crazy (laughs) y'all like you know like we feel like but that's it helps us so much when we're you know it feels like there's a crisis every other day and something to be divisive about and someone you know suddenly we're all experts on this thing and you know sometimes it's okay to just be like this is crazy but you know like I'm gonna approach my life with uh, creativity and fun and and laughter and it just makes the whole process so much more enjoyable yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And even being, I think you guys will resonate with this too, like being very crunchy or holistic, you know, I'm like, you know, I'll put wheatgrass at my butt. Like I'm like, it's crunchy <laughs> the kids, you know, and so a lot of my life being fully transparent. Um, and still to this day, I'm very, you know, I want a, a wellness line, obviously I'm, I'm very passionate to expose the truths I should say of the pharmaceutical industry. Right. But I do have to realize that I can be 99.999% usually against it in most cases, and it's abused and not used properly. But I have to realize that there's a 0.1%, you know, or whatever it is, um, you know, where people might need an antidepressant for six months of their life. So they don't, so they don't, you know, do something worse. And, and I've seen that even in my brother, you know, he's very holistic now. He was on eight different medications. He got off them. It's an amazing story, but there was a time where he needed those antidepressant, antidepressants just for a hot minute. And I had so much judgment around it and realizing that now I'm like, I can be extremely holistic, hippie to be like doing all the natural supplements and stuff and honor that there might be a time and place for somebody else where that is needed too. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not long-term because I do think we should focus more so first on the the natural solutions, but I'm not the one to, you know what I mean? I'm not the one to to know or judge that. So that's something I've had like so much judgment around or even the birthing process, you know, I'm like, I better be in a bathtub and like unicorns better be like singing while like, you know, a shaman's there like chanting or something, (laughs) you know? Let's be honest. I'm probably going to end up at the hospital being an epidural <laughs> because God's going to be like, oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> you thought you were going to be drinking your mushy latte while you yeah. were in birth, but like, right. totally not the plan. And like knowing that like that doesn't make me less holistic or crunchy. It doesn't make me a horrible woman or person. Like if the baby's healthy, that's, that's it. So yeah. I think for me, that's the season I'm in. I'm like, and you can't be so judgmental of things because you have chose this natural route when maybe for a few people, they're not there yet, or they're not ready for that. Who knows their situation? So I'm, I'm still working on that. I've actually never shared that publicly, but I'm still working on that. Cause you know, you know, in the health world, it's like, it can almost go too far where then you're judgmental of like anything else. You're just like green juice or you're going to die, you know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, Oh, I need to realize like if someone wants to have a glass of wine here and there or whatever drink, or I don't know, it's like, it's their life. I'm not going to I can't think I'm perfect and they're not. That's not the way it is. So, yeah. right. Totally. We, we totally feel you. We're, we're expanding our horizons all the time and, and expanding our horizons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you drink your green juice and someone's drinking a beer, you're like expanding my horizon. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, uh, we've already talked about a few of these, um, but we, we love uh, hearing from our guests. Again, another ninja life skill, especially this time in our world is to be able to have 
constructive conversation around some unpopular opinions. So I would love to hear from you. We've already talked about a few maybe unpopular opinions, but what would be an unpopular opinion that you maintain that you would be uh, cool sharing? And you can go wherever you want. Our listeners no are there. They know we are open books. We talk about it all. We talk about psychedelics. You know, we're, we're, we're very open. So go wherever you want, my friend. Yeah, I would say, um, even, you know, pharmaceuticals, obviously it's not popular right now. Um, my, I'll keep it just to one. Cause I think, I guess I have a bunch, but, um, yeah, unpopular opinion. Um, I think masks are bullshit. <laughs> I think they always okay. work unpopular opinion. I think you should have never had a lockdown. That isn't me honoring mm. that something happened that was real and it affected people. Um, but I do not believe it was necessary for the economy. I think more people lost jobs and committed suicide and had depression and so many worse things happened because we did that. And I will stand Mm -hmm. firm on that. And I think it was put a tinfoil hat on me. I don't care. I think it was planned. I think there's a lot of other things going on beyond what we'll ever know or ever be able to understand in in government, which is so corrupt. So I think that it's unpopular right now to say, but I think it should have never, ever happened that way. I think the people who needed help obviously go to hospital, get help. And then people who are taking care of their immune system every day, let me, let me live my life. Let me do my thing. Um, we should have never had a lockdown. So I'm sure that somebody is going to hate me for saying that, but I, I don't care. I think you'll it's probably have, you know, we should be yeah. able to have these conversations. I know. Yeah. Right. And that's our point. That's, that's why we ask these questions is because yeah. we, we want to hear people's unpopular opinion in case it grinds against something that we think, which by the way, full alignment with you on this. And um, if someone wants also, to stay home and it's two yeah. years in, three, yeah. go ahead. You can still stay home. Doing it. I'm not stopping <laughs> you. You have the yeah. right. <laughs> Free will. Yeah, no, I love that. And I thank you for, for sharing that. I know it's not always easy, you know, in yeah. this world of like, I want people to like me, you know, we, we sometimes censor ourselves. And so we, we just appreciate that for sure. Yeah, no, it's really hard, especially with such a sensitive topic, but, um, seeing it be lifted now, even on airports and things like that, just seeing people's energy change and their happiness and seeing smiles and seeing kids see what a normal face looks like. You know, I just, Mm -hmm. I just think we didn't really talk about the psychological implications of doing that. And we're now talking about it, which I'm happy we are. And, um, yeah, I just think it shouldn't have happened. And I think, uh, hopefully now we're getting to a place where we won't, won't have to go back. I, I definitely have a new layer of gratitude for the power of being around other human beings and that collective energy where two or more are gathered. Like I'll never forget after the initial lockdown quarantine, when we met up with a bunch of people from Organifi and these are just bright, shiny Organifi faces, people that are my best friends. And I, I just missed them so dearly over the course of two and a half months. And we had to social distance, do this weird thing, but even just being around them yeah. and seeing their face and, and feeling their energy, I was like, I was high as fuck. Like (laughs) I was super high just from being around other human beings. And I'm like, wow, the power of community, the power of buy-in, the power of, of other individuals who are like, I'm here vulnerable, expressing my gratitude and my love for you and for us. It is palpable. It's yeah. so rad. Yeah. Even just a hug. I remember you yeah. know, we never stopped hugging. If, if somebody was open to a hug, like we were open, like I, I didn't want to live in this frame of mind that I am so delicate that I can't even hug someone. Yeah. You know, like, I just don't believe that our human bodies have evolved that way. I don't believe that if you are living in health on a daily basis, that your body is that, you know, uh, yeah. fragile. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I mean, and especially here in Texas, it's been open for a long time, but the few people that still decide to, it's like, yeah, that's where I have to be like, okay, cool. You're at the grocery store wearing a mask. All right. And like, I have to work on that judgment, I guess. But at the same time, I'm like, just be, come on, just be free with me. It feels really good. Yeah. 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 I, I'm I like, my... If you need oxygen for your immune system, it's a little ironic that you're covering up your mouth. I mean, it's just so yeah. weird. It doesn't even yeah. make sense. But yeah. In those cases, I find myself, um, you know, just seeing, because the initial feeling, sometimes the initial thought is like a judgmental thought, which I don't want to yeah. hold in my body because again, we're going back to everything we've talked about so far. Um, but really it, it kind of translates into like, oh man, it. I, I feel bad that they're living in that kind of prison, you know, mm-hmm. and it kind of yeah. switches to like empathy. Not that like they're some horrible, like sad creature that I need to pity, but it, it just feels better in my body to hold the space of empathy rather than judgment and kind of shifting that it, it it's definitely helped me. I think. Yeah. I mean, that's the only choice we have, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to ask you about, you know, we talk a lot on the show about like, you know, catalysts and these, these moments through life that are seemingly difficult roadblocks, stumbling blocks, whatever you want to call them. Like, you know, we have a divorce in our history that was horrific and awful, but ended up being the most like transformative stepping stone experience of our lives. Uh, maybe you could share just like, you know, one of those types of moments in your life that was seemingly difficult or tough um, that has ended up being, you know, one of your greatest teachers, one of those moments that has kind of launched you into uh, uh, success, happiness, however you want to define that. Yeah. I love that story that you guys have. That's so neat. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you got married really young, right? Like, yeah, early, early 23. Coming? Yeah. We're but like, we were, we started dating when we were 16. Yeah. Child, childhood sweethearts together for 10 yeah. years. We got, we were married for three and then split up and I moved down here to California and we were divorced mm-hmm. for three, three years. Yeah. yeah. Was there like a while where you didn't talk at all? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We three, was, I mean, three, it was three it was full half. years legally. We're, we're still technically legally divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we, yeah. we moved Like on. you Did, never thought you'd see him like again for no. a moment there. Me. D- deleted numbers, dated other people, completely moved on. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when I first started following you and like we sent a couple of voice memos back and forth and you were like, oh my gosh, you know, Chase. And I was like, yeah, um, he's my boyfriend question mark. Cause like we were like dating again, uh, but we were like in it, we were like soul partners. So I was like, I don't have time to like tell the story right now. Yeah, but, you're like, like, How much time do you have? Yeah. <laughs> but I remember you were probably like, what? Like this, this girl is yeah. weird. Like, uh, cause I was so like, I don't really know what to call him. Wow. Okay. This like, I need to like, wow. But now I like want to interview you guys on this. Cause this is like, <laughs> what you never hear about people. That's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it are was you guys wild. remarried or no? Cause you're no, not, we're, we're, we're happily divorced. We are swimming in the ocean of love <laughs> without the life. Jacket. Wait, so you le- wait, wait, one last question. You have to legally wait for those papers to clear for you to ever get remarried. I don't know. In, we're, I business, don't know. we're business partners now, which is more official in my mind. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Uh, we haven't looked into it. I keep yeah. posting because I'm very invested in this now. So every day, keep me posted. When it's <laughs> yeah. <over. laughs> yeah, and I don't know. Like we've talked about it, we we don't know if we, we'll ever actually get get married again. Because well, like, like, you have to because it'd be hilarious to have like a second party wedding and everyone's there. Again, right. Like, Forever right. Us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> we we've talked about doing some like ceremony it wouldn't be a wedding because i loved our first wedding but it would be like a love ceremony where we get to bring other people in on it like other people that want to you know like celebrate love celebrate love yeah and so like have it be like this renewal for a bunch of people not just us but we would make it super hippie super ceremonial we'd probably have you know paul check as the shaman and you know like lead everyone through like a micro dosing ceremony We'll, you know, spike the, oh, spike the coming. sparkling water, spike the organifi with some psilocybin. Right. <laughs> oh my God. This is the best. I'm like so intrigued by this. Every time you guys talk about it, I'm like, wow, I need to like sit them down and like ask them everything. This is so yeah, fascinating. We're, we're, an open we're book. open. Open book. But it's I love it. I love it. Teacher. I love it yeah. for you. You know why? Because you got married real young and I think you needed some time to like take yeah. a second to like take a beat. Cause like, I think getting married that young is usually not. You're a that. baby. Right. Yeah. No, we, we say it all the time. It's like, it's like buying real estate and expecting to find your forever home immediately, like right away yeah. without ever renting, <clears throat> without ever living elsewhere. Yeah. You and, gotta, you gotta rent. And from the evangelical community, it's, it's very encouraged. Like don't live together unless you're married. You know, there's all these kind of like guidelines. And so we were very much, although beautifully in love and had the most like epic childhood romance ever, like mm-hmm. Dawson's Creek level nineties kids romance. Uh, it was a pressure to make, to become adults when we weren't ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 23, you're like a fetus, you know? Yeah. yeah you're not basically. ready for that. Like, yeah. you know, with like zero tools for healthy yeah. and effective communication or like understanding who you are yeah. or whatever. Like it was very codependent. And so, yeah, definitely the the split. Somehow this, we're- Yeah, we're, we're, we're not, we're, not interviewing us. So. <laughs> I know. Like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, wait, this is so cool. Oh shit, what was the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but yeah, we- Back to the question of catalysts, you know, the divorce, our separation and coming back together yeah. has been a major catalyst for us. Has there been anything in your life that has been maybe a difficult situation where you're in it and you're like, why the F is this happening to me right now? But then maybe like a year later, you step out of it. And you're like, holy shit, I learned so much from that. Yeah. You know, initially I was going to say even my parents' divorce uh, was, it was a movie, but not Dawson's Creek. It was pretty bad. And I initially was going to say that because it happened when I was 20, 
randomly out of nowhere and it just rocked my world. It was really bad, but to keep with today and just feeling like this just kind of all ties in and feeling safe enough to share this, you know, I think a big thing that happened to me is what I've learned is, you know, getting, I guess you could say backlash or criticism on the internet or cancel culture, whatever you want to call it. Now, um, having experienced that to a small to medium sized degree in 2020 was the most painful thing I ever Mm. went through. Um, more than even my parents divorce and watching my dad cheat and all this crazy shit. Mm. I, that was so painful to wake up to, to videos of people just saying random shit. I've never met hate videos. I mean, it was, it was by far the worst thing I've experienced as an adult. And I've grown up so much since then. And that was only two and a half years ago. So, you know, I've tried breath work and therapy. And that's honestly why I got into mushrooms and all of this is to heal from that because it was so traumatic. But now looking back, I was just telling Clay this yesterday. It was such a gift because I didn't realize what a people pleaser I was Mm -hmm. and how much of this job is, is you, you can't hold that for, you can't hold that people pleaser energy for that long. Cause eventually something's going to rock your world like that. And you're going to have to realize to find, you're going to have to find your own self-confidence and your own self-love and know that even if 10 people on the internet hate me, I still show up. I still like who I am. I'm still confident in who I am and it doesn't affect me or, or, or where I'm going or, or, or who I am, you know? And, and that's been really interesting to navigate because I wasn't ready for it. It happened to me just overnight. So it, mm. it was too fast, too soon. So it was very <clears throat> traumatic on my system. And so experiencing that and not having any control of what to do. And it just really messed me up in the head of like, what do I do? Do I go do another job? Like it was just really bad. And so now I'm seeing the gifts in it though. I'm like, wow, it really inspired me to like pivot into comedy and maybe go back into wellness. And it like woke me up to like, I, I love my job, but like, I don't put all of my, my purpose and my significance in the internet. Like, I know I like myself outside of it in the real world. Like it just had me work on a lot of things that I never faced or worked on having a job that was, or a life that was, you know, sharing it publicly with, with people. So yeah. that was the thing that is like, it rocked my world. And now I'm seeing all the gifts in it actually, which at the time I did not think it was, but now I'm like, Oh, cool. Wow. That really matured me even from yeah. 30 to 32. Yeah. I, I remember I only knew like tiny little pieces and, yeah. and <clears throat> obviously it was a very like personal situation. I wasn't going to be like, yo, what's happening? What's up? Um, but I could tell oh, like, I don't know from, either. <laughs> yeah. From the outside that you were dealing with something really heavy and just knowing you as a person and how like beautiful of a person you are and you're so service oriented. I knew that w- what was coming at you was, uh, I want to say like unfounded. It was, it was, um, it just seemed so out of left field and it it was, it, from my perspective, it seemed like it was, um, and maybe this is off, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like maybe some people that were looking to be professionally offended, like your job to like, how, how can I be offended in this situation? Yeah. You know, it was a very overly sensitive time. And I say that with all due respect to everybody. Cause I'm a user on the internet. Listen, I scroll by things all the time that I don't like, or I don't maybe like about someone, or I assume things, but it doesn't mean I'm going to go tell them that they suck or to go die. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, we, we need some new conversations around obviously the internet and cyber bullying. Honestly, I think that's what it is. And I think that, uh, yeah, I never experienced it. And so, you know, to experience it for the first time in your career, like eight, nine years in when everything is going great, it's at the height of my career. And then all of a sudden to wake up to like, what, like people hate you and your brain associates people hate you, but really it's not right. They don't know me. I've never met them again. You could walk through that logically. Like I'll never meet this person. Who cares? Like, but in the moment you don't, you don't think of it like that. Now I'm like, whatever, bye. There's a thousand more people who are a better fit or who do know my heart and my sense of humor or whatever. But if some if it's, you know, if I'm too much for someone or something I say is offensive, um, when I've always been, I haven't even been that controversial on my page at all then I'm just not the right person for you. And I feel yeah. really good about that now where in, even two years ago, I would be like, no, no, everybody has to love me and like me. And um, I'm learning to be misunderstood. Like, I don't think you can be an influencer or have this job and not be willing to be misunderstood. Like you're going to get someone who's going to come on your page and just hate you for no reason. They're just going to think you suck. And you have to live with that and know like, who cares? It's Sharon in, in Idaho and like, she's going to live her best life and bye, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. With, you just got to like learn, like learn to laugh it off, I guess. And even with comedy, you know, it's a, 
a very sensitive uh, job. You got to be ready for it. You're literally asking for it. You're literally saying, I'm going to dance the line and comedy is truth plus pain. And that's why it's funny is because there's something truthful about it. So yeah. Yeah. there was a situation where there was a joke and, and there was some truth in it. Obviously that's what made it funny. And thousands of people thought it was funny and one didn't. And then she brought her friends over next thing, you know, it's, it's the, the mentality of like, you know, Oh, if one person thinks I meant, I meant it this way. It became a whole thing. And so that's where it's like, Oh, wow. If I really want to go into comedy. You have to realize that even the best stand up or whatever, the best comedians now, they, they have a tough skin. They have the ability to say like, no, I, I, I know that that was a joke and I know what my intention was. Mm-hmm. So now I just see things through a little bit of a different lens. And uh, since then, I feel like I've attracted an audience that has a better sense of humor, which I really like. So yeah, <laughs> again, another yeah. gift from it, so but it, yeah. it wasn't a gift. So yeah, there, it, it really is a balance because y- you want to be able to take constructive feedback in and like, Oh, you know, I haven't thought about that. That's a really good point. Yeah. I'm going to incorporate that next or yeah, maybe I could phrase it in a little bit different way or teach it in a little bit of different way when it's constructive, it's like totally welcome. But also there is a fine line between, you know, you have over a hundred thousand followers being a people pleaser for a hundred thousand followers. That is impossible. And we shouldn't have to take that on as our responsibility you know, there's no way that we could ever do that. So it's, it is this balance of like being open to constructive feedback, but then also not tying your identity yeah. to whether that person, you know, really takes your message in or not when you know that your intentions were pure for whatever the, whatever the thing is. Yeah. That's what I always go back to. I'm like, okay, what are my intentions? And if I know my heart is in the right place, I get grounded and I know it, I know I can press post and know if one girl doesn't like this, like then it is what it is. Like I, yeah. I gotta go. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And I'd rather have interesting content and dance that line and be funny and have one person every year that hates it versus like just the most boring content that like people are like, everyone loves it. And, like yeah. well, I just, I can't like, I, I'd rather just stick a pencil in my eyeball. It's just not who I am. So I'm learning to like <laughs> step into that more. And yeah, I think we just saw a time of like constructive feedback, like you said, is so different. And that can be sent in a personal message or in a nice way or an email. But when people are making hate videos, their intention is not to give yeah. feedback yeah. for the collective or the community or enhance the world. They're doing it because they, so they can get seen and get clicks. Like it's so obvious. And yeah. I will stand for that as being one of the most destructive things to creators. Like it's just, it's real messed up. So yeah. And I wasn't ready for it. I think a lot of times in life, if you're ready for it, you can mentally prepare, I guess, but I wasn't. And so I just woke up one morning and I was like, oh shit. Yeah. I mean, if you're ready for it, you've already clearly learned the lesson, right? Like yeah, you, uh, it, it is a, a lesson when you're not ready for it. Yeah. That was the only way for me to learn that, I guess. And I didn't know, you don't know what you don't know until you're in it. So it wasn't until going through that, that I was like, oh wow, I am totally a people pleaser. I was so naive. I literally thought that every single person who ever came across my page was going to love it. Like I know I'm a good person. I'm likable. I'm nice. Like, how could you hate me? Like I was living in that land, not realizing like the internet's a different game. Like yeah. there's going to be somebody who just like, you know, Susan's pissed off today. So she's going to tell you your hair sucks or whatever sucks. Like you just, <laughs> you yeah. don't know what you're going to get. And like, I lived in this land of like, Oh, everyone's just going to love it. It's like, no, it's not yeah. how it works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's oh. such a, such a mirror. And I can't even imagine on, the, on that scale. Um, mm-hmm. you, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned, well, we've talked about it a couple of times, psilocybin, uh, but then, but then microdosing even post this event, um, maybe a little bit like share with us, you know, we're, we're big on mushrooms, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your experience been like through a microdosing protocol? What was a little bit of the intention going into it and, and ultimately like, uh, how you felt through it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. Cause it's something I thought I would never do. I think a lot of people say that like, Oh, I will never touch it. Cause I think I assumed that obviously you would be hallucinating and didn't realize there was a way to do it where you wouldn't be. So a few months ago, I started on a protocol where I would do about three or four days on and then two to three days off. So I just did kind of a cycle. Um, I did more of an intuitive cycle versus it being really strict. I don't know if that's the best way, but honestly, I've heard so many different mix the feedback yeah. on yeah. how to do it. And now I haven't done it in probably three weeks. So it's like, if I go do it tomorrow, because it's, you know, a Friday and I feel like I want to go on a long walk and just process some things I'm going through, I'll use it almost like medicine, right? Like I use it in an intentional way. I'm not using it at a party. I'm not using it to get effed up. I'm at most taking 0.2 of a gram. So it's a very, very small um, sub perceptual amount. So I'm not seeing monkeys flying or anything. 
<laughs> for anyone listening who is still terrified of, of mushrooms, you know, people are like, are you seeing shit? Can you drive your car? I'm like, yes, I can drive my car. I get that question a lot when I share about it. They're like, can you live your day? I'm like, yeah, you're totally fine if yeah. you're taking a micro dose. Now, if you're in into a gram and above, you might obviously be having a different, more profound experience. So I've yet to do more than about half a gram. I would love to do a gram or a gram and a half and, and with a facilitator or just kind of in a different setting, maybe during breath work or something one day or outside, I would love to do that. But for right now, I've just been loving microdosing. Now here's the funny thing. I took it for one healing from this event. And then two, um, for creativity, I'm like, okay, what is next for me? Like, I'm going to tune in, I'm going to go on walks. Well, <laughs> what happens is they say mushrooms, I don't know. You guys are no more than me. I'm still new to this, but they can sometimes enhance like what's already in you or what's present. Right. Oh yeah. So some days you'll feel like actually a little anxious on it. Cause you're like already anxious or something. And then some days it just, I'm already like silly. So like, I just start laughing at like the stupidest shit that I already would laugh at. But like my neighbor outside, I'm like, Is, you know, he's such a funny guy. Like he's just a funny <laughs> guy. So then I'm not thinking about like creative projects. Yeah. And all of the, I'm supposed to be getting downloads from source about my next you know, podcast episode or something. And instead I'm like, my neighbor, man, he's just, he's a funny guy. Like, <laughs> it's just like, so sometimes, honestly, I just gotta be real. It doesn't make me more productive. If I want to be super productive, I have to go to nootropics. Like I have to really mm, go into yeah. Organifi Pure or, you know, Beekeepers Naturals Brain Fuel. Like I got my whole stack now of all my, all my brain products for like focus and ADD, but mushrooms actually have not they're not, they're not my, for my right brain. They're definitely like all just enhancing even more left brain for me. So I just want to be outside. I want to have an interesting conversation. I kind of want to fart around. I want to color. I want to laugh at random shit outside. So that's been my experience so far is that, but I, but but then, but then you hear from people who are like, Oh, I took it and I wrote a book. I'm like, you're writing a book. I'm like (laughs) laughing at a tree outside. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I'm not even taking that much. So I'm like, I don't know how people are doing this, but yeah, that's the thing is like you you said it. It's a, it's an amplifier. It, it can amplify what's already existing in you, but it also we we call it medicine. It, it is medicine, and depending on what your intention is going in, I swear it can hear you, but also like provide what you need in a way like the medicine that you need in a way that you weren't expecting. So for you, maybe part of your healing from this you know cataclysmic event in your life meant, you know, actually leaning into this natural gift that you have that is comedy and laughing and, you know, staring at your neighbor or just like just being in yourself and, and, um, letting that medicine take, take a hold of you that way, rather than maybe your medicine isn't to write a book, you know, like you can do that anytime. Like maybe the healing was in can kind of provided to you in a different way that you weren't expecting, but it, it does always, I think provide what you need. Um, it just doesn't always come in the way that you think. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I was like forcing it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take this sacred medicine and then I'm going to write a book and then we're on a walk. It was like the very first day I did it or the second day. And our neighbor's just a goofy guy. He's like, always oh, like gardening. He's retired. He's like 90. His name's Earl. You know, he's just like living the life and I'm outside and we're on a walk. I'm like, Clay, Earl's just so funny. He's like, just so funny. You know, he's such a quirky, weird dude. And he's like, yeah, I guess. I don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> He's just so weird, you know, we're on a walk. And then I just go, you know what? Today is just going to be the best day ever. Like just, it's just going to be the best day ever. He's like, what did you do? (laughs) And I was like, all I took is a little bit of mushroom. So for me, I was like ready for all these downloads, but instead that's my experience. So sometimes I get a little bummed because I'm like, how are these people like getting more profound things so that I'm judging myself, Mm. but maybe that's my journey right now. I don't know. But then I know that I could just like, for me, if I need to focus, I do more of nootropics, but I, yeah, I'm curious if you guys have seen like a focus effect from it. That's definitely not my experience. Uh, it, it's very, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, go you. Ahead. I was going to say it's very, um, the, the dose matters a lot because, you know, yeah. we have like uh, capsules that are like 100 milligrams and usually I'll take two or three. Sometimes that three is over it's over, like over the limit of where I can sit down and be productive. So, and it's, it's kind of unpredictable, you know? And so sometimes it's great. Yes. For like, I can jam for six hours and, you know, do a whole guide on, you know, coffee enemas or whatever, HCC or whatever it is. And then other times I find myself like drifting out and I'm like, wow, that palm tree is so beautiful. 
I should go outside. And now like you, I'm, I'm pulled out of my work, but it doesn't mean that that's not what I need. So um, yeah, I, I would say it, it is a fine line. It, you got to find your happy dose, but even within that happy dose, mushrooms are sometimes unpredictable and you think that you're going to get something and you get something else. So it's the yeah. dose is, is sensitive. Yeah. So for me, like I'm a pretty productive human being just without drugs or any, any kind of just a uh, supplement. And if I do need more, I go to the nootropic side of things, uh, qualia, lion's mane, uh, kratom, um, something along those lines. And I'm very productive with the consistent download that I get with psilocybin is dude, stop caring so much. Like stop giving a shit about all this, all the productivity, all the yeah. things you need to achieve. Yeah. And so that that's a, that's very consistent feedback where I think from a microdosing perspective, it is helpful is it helps think like for lack of a better term, it helps you think outside the box subconsciously. So if you're like applying it and you're really trying to focus, like think outside the box or, or be really creative, I don't know if it works as well as it might just subconsciously. So as you're maybe uh, doing something like walking, you know, for me, it's swimming. Um, and I, and I have this supplement in my body that is a little more expansive. I find that the, the epiphanies, if you will, um, are much more frequent. They're much more outside of the box than they would be had I not had this um, supplement that really does help kind of scramble these default mode patterns of the way that you think. And for me, it's like left or right, top, bottom, you know, in a box, uh, because that's just my programming and the way that I've been been groomed to, to problem solve. And so with a little bit of this, you know, help, which is like clinically proven to kind of scramble this default mode, I find my subconscious processing be being a little more outside of the box, being a little more creative, having epiphanies that I probably would not have had, had I not had this assistance for my subconscious. And so less of like a direct application to something like the limitless pill and more of like this behind the scenes, um, like tidying up the, the facilities that your, your mind has for creating something new or novel. Yeah. I mean, let's hope that you're left brain if you're doing finance, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know how to open an Excel document. So thank yeah. God for you, because I, I would just be like, what are we doing here again? Oh yeah. We've made money this year. Right. Yeah. I think we've, yeah. we're fine. Like we're like in the red, but like, it's totally fine. Don't worry. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's so funny because I'm super right brain. Like I make mm. this joke all the time with Clay and you remind me so much of him being like super left brain, like organized, <laughs> analytical. He's like, you don't have any left brain, do you? I'm like, no, it's just like not there. Like I just have like a right brain. So it's funny. So when I take mushrooms, I'm like, damn it. I thought I was going to like get some left brain. No, it's just more right brain. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I don't know. I was hoping it would bring me more, but again, I'm only like three, four months in. Yeah. Now you're making me want to do it again. I'm like, Ooh, but, um, so I think it's something that who knows it might change. It might change one day, but for right now, that's, that's the experience with it. I need to, I need yeah. to do an episode on it. Cause it's, it's definitely something that I know people are very, yeah. very curious about. Um, yeah, absolutely. Question in the DM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you mentioned your, your partner clay, yeah. uh, and we obviously on this, on this show, we talk about relationships a lot. That's kind of a cornerstone of, of, um, our values and developing conscious relationships, not only with your partner, but with God, with your craft, with your body, with movement, everything. And so I would love to hear a little bit about your relationship. And uh, it really seems like you and your partner put a lot of intentionality, um, at least from afar. That's I, I don't think I've met Clay maybe once, um, but it seems like you guys really put a lot of intention into your relationship. And, and uh, we, we talk about relationship superpowers. What would you say is you and Clay's relationship superpower? Ooh, that's so good and juicy. Cause we just went to uh, a few months ago, a relationship workshop where they talked about the fact that your relationship is it's a third entity that you guys mentioned. It's like, there's me, there's him. And then there's like this third party that's yeah. been created mm -hmm. <laughs> prior to children. It's like a little energy. That's like you, you are you yeah. got us, I guess the us yeah. energy. And I was like, damn, I never thought of it that way. And I'm very like, I'm the, I'm the, uh, they always say there's two people in a relationship. There's the I and there's the we person. I'm the I, I need to work on the we, he's like, we an hour, you know? And I'm like, miss like independent, like, I, this is my life, you know? So I'm always working on like the, the we-ness and the teamness. Um, but our superpower and the thing that keeps us together is definitely, it's definitely comedy and, and humor and 
Uh, that's why I fell in love with him. And, and he gets it. He gets my weird. He uh, celebrates me owning my weird. He understands it. We write jokes together. He actually writes some of my scripts for the comedy content I create. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So we, we played in that space and we want to explore that more together actually, because he's by far the funniest comedy writer ever. And a lot of comedies writing, you have to write it first. And then yeah. we go through it and I'll show him and he'll be like, Oh, he switch this line do this. And so I'm constantly amazed by his ability to do that. And I want to encourage him to do that even more and express that. Cause I'm like, dude, most people can't like just write a funny script like that in like two minutes. Like, how are you doing this? So that's something that we like kind of come together on. And I would say is like our common, our common, like, uh, it's like our glue is that we, we joke and say, we have these contact lenses in that see life as a skit. And so we're able to always come back to like, wasn't that funny? Like, isn't that kind of funny that today we woke up and like pickles now, you know, his back legs going out, he needs surgery our tire of our car goes out on the way to go pick him up. And we were just like one of those days where we could have just been like, seriously, God, like really like all this shit's just happening in the same hour. And we started laughing. And I love that. I love that we're able to just, you know, come together and be like, this is funny. This is funny. Like that all this shit's happening to us right now in this moment. So I would say that's our like collective superpower. And then just him. I mean, he's, he's my polar opposite. He's super grounded. He's very left brain. He's very logical. He's very, um, He's just like the ultimate grounded masculine. And when I'm in the clouds, he's just, just steady Eddie. So love it. I'm sure I drive him nuts, but we're like a, you know, it's like a, Oh, the balloon with the, what is it? The analogy, the balloon with the, the guy the, oh. the thing that holds the balloon down, you know? The, oh yeah. The, the little weight. The weight. Yeah. Yeah. The weight in the balloon. So that, that's yeah. Yeah. a nutshell. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, awesome. the little puppy thing that holds it down. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. uh, no, that's so good because, you know, something that we talk about a lot is play and how many relationships are starving for play and yeah. silliness and to be able to, to laugh together and be silly together. Like so many people lose that. And you see so many people who are in their forties, fifties, sixties, where it's like, you're around these couples and you're like, do you guys even like each other? Like, yeah. Okay. Hashtag loyalty. Hashtag. You might love each other on a deep level, deep down or something, but like, it doesn't even seem like you like being around each other. Like, where is the fun? Where is the play? And that's something certainly that keeps helps keep our spark alive is being able to play together. Yeah. It's just like a lost art that we somehow let go of when we're, you know, over eight years old, we're taught that like, we need to be serious and what are your goals and, you know, learn freaking math and all of this stuff. And, <laughs> and uh, no, it's, it's something that we, we hold very valuable. So that definitely hits home for sure. Yeah. And creating, you know, novel experiences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think relationships so often like live on the past. They live on that spark phase when you, when you connect initially and you have this like, you know, combustion and it's, it's super alive and then you get married and then it's like, Oh wait, we have to relive those moments on for, for eternity just to keep the spark alive, but it, it's diminished, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it loses its value. So it's like, there's nothing wrong with nostalgia. It's, it's beautiful. And, and, tradition and ritual is glorious, but there's this such an importance in creating novel experience, creating play, creating those moments. And we call them like magic bubbles where we out seemingly out of nowhere, have this experience that is novel and fun and filled with play. And it's like, fuck, we just created like a magic bubble. This is so rad. And it's so important to have that as you, uh, uh, the recipe for the spark is happenstance. It's random. It's like a you know lightning hits the ground and, first, a, and, yeah. and there's a spark. But to keep the spark alive is a different set of tools. It's a different set of ingredients. It's like creating fire and learning how to nurture it consciously and intentionally. And I think I think play is one of those ingredients that's so critical to that you know yeah. phrase of keeping the spark alive. Oh, that I love that. It's like getting the dopamine hit of of yeah, play together. And yeah, I'm so intrigued by that. Like what keeps things going versus what initially worked and and yeah. yeah that's fascinating but i we always we always say that together we're like okay what are our values for our relationship so i have my own top three values in life i did it at this conference i think it was obviously play freedom and authenticity like if i don't have those three things i don't want to be like if they literally said what makes life worth living and i was like freedom mm. play authenticity if i don't have those three like i'm mm. out i just like yeah. what's the point if i don't have those and then he had a few and then it's what's your relationships values though and play was definitely in the top three. They had to nail it down to three. And so it's kind of like our commitment of like, okay, this morning was really shitty, but like, let's just laugh. Like, let's laugh. Okay. 
Yeah. You got to just laugh this off, I guess. Cause what other choice do you have other than being yeah. pissed at each other? And now you're anxious and now I'm being, you know, bratty. And it's like, I constantly am trying to come back to that and work on that of like, okay, we've agreed that we're going to come back to, to play and joy when we can. So, yeah. yeah, I love that. You're, you're speaking to it so beautifully. Something that we talk about a lot is, is creating your experience. And you, we, I think sometimes forget as individuals, people just in the world, kind of following this mainstream script of happiness that people so many times, like try to create what they see other people creating in their life or in their relationship. Like, Oh, that's not normal. This is normal. This is right. This is wrong. And I think people forget that like, we're all creating our own masterpiece. That is our life and our relationship. And you get to create what you want, but you have to be really clear on like, what are those values? Like you're talking about, we we've been talking about recently. Um, what is our high dream? What is our relationship high dream together? Not like high, like smoking, Gotta but like, yeah. <laughs> not like on something, but just what is the ultimate dream of our relationship and, and how do we express that? How, how are we creating that? How are we proactively creating that? And you're, you're just speaking to it beautifully. Oh, I love that. Ooh, that's a good question. Now I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to tell play that. Like, what is our high dream? Yeah. 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 Ours is, what do we come up with? Ours was, um, freedom is a huge yeah, freedom. Theme. We, we yeah. live free together. So we are both free in our individuality to evolve and change and grow each of us, but then together we're living free together as a unit. And it feels like that whole, whole, you know, and, and then what is created is this third entity consciousness where the, the sum is greater or the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Yes. Oh, that's good. I love that. Yeah. I think I'm always working on that in relationship is, uh, is still allowing myself to be free in the, in the, in the partnership, you know, yeah. so mm-hmm. yeah, no, that will so forever good. be my life's work. Yeah. What has been a, a great teacher within your relationship? How, how have you, um, allowed yourself to learn from the, this guru that we have in our presence all the time? That is our relationship. What, what major lesson or multiple, if you want to, have you learned from your relationship? Yeah. You know, I think overcoming this fear of, of commitment in itself. Right. And of, of, um, knowing that there's, there's actually freedom in choice a lot of times too. And I heard this the other day on a podcast about relationships and it was for the person who was like, yeah, of course I, I want to get married. Of course I love this person. But like the idea of like, I'm an Enneagram seven, like the idea of anything being finite, I'm like, no, Mm -hmm. no, I might, I might change my mind. Like, what if I change my mind? I want to be able to have choice. You know, I love choice. So they said something interesting because even the conversation of like monogamy versus, you know, not monogamy. And it, there's all these different, you know, relationship types now. And it's like, there's this conversation of like, unless you're, you know, if you're choosing monogamy, you're not super conscious, you know, that's not the conscious choice. And oh, it's yeah. like, dude, I actually think it's the hardest, most conscious choice. You have to look at someone every day and it's your freaking mirror and you got to actually work through shit versus being like, Oh, see, I'll go date Brad now. Like, right. I think it's actually easier to have multiple partners. I'd be like, you're pissing me <laughs> off. I'm going to the next guy. Yeah. So it's like harder to stay in it with one person. So it got me thinking, like they said something like there's, there's freedom in that choice or in that monogamy. And I was like, Oh, wow. So knowing that he is that safety and knowing that like I can now explore and express in that safe one person chosen container is actually that itself can be really fun and expansive versus seeing it as like, Oh no, one lap, you know, yeah. <laughs> for seeing yeah. it as limiting, you see it as actually like expansion of mm-hmm. choice in a way of freedom. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a really relevant topic. Um, you know, we, we see it all the time. We're kind of in the relationship lane and, and yeah. that, that whole idea of open relationships, just how to navigate that conversation. But, but it's almost like monogamy is this like, uh, easier spiritual route or something. And it's like, damn, actually it's really freaking hard. We've been through a divorce. It's, it's not easy and continuing to show up, show up as a complete individual and avoid this codependent, you know, filling in each other's deficiencies, uh, mentality is not easy. And it's such a spiritual practice of, of learning to choose love and, and the, the new layers of love through monogamy and having this, this, uh, muscle, if you will, to create those more expansive opportunities for new connection, new definition of the relationship, 
new uh, layers of, of this love experience. And it's, yeah. it is not easy. No. And it's not that one is better than the other. One is right. One is wrong. It's again, it comes back to, I feel like the, a theme of this whole conversation has been freedom and free will and free choice and different things can exist at the same time without, you know, um, you know, <sighs> Uh, what's the word I want to say? Um, endangering the other, like they can both exist at the same time. Like your choice of polyamory does not, you know, endanger my relationship in any way. Like if that's you, like do it. But it's, I think that we, uh, it's a mistake to label it as right or wrong, good or bad. It's just whatever that person wants to experience and create with their life. Like we get to, and it, it that's beautiful. Oh, absolutely. And there's seasons and yeah, I know. I know a lot of people who are in that situation and usually it doesn't, I haven't seen it end really well. And I've seen it only be a, for a season keyword. I've seen it be temporary and they ultimately yeah. end up going back to monogamy and they, and they have more experience to even speak from this point. Cause I haven't been in, in an open relationship before, but they all say like at the end, they're like, dude, monogamy is, is so it's, 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 it's the real test too, mm-hmm. because you can't leave, you can't go to the next thing. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it sounds very sexy and enticing and like, who wouldn't want to be like, yeah, you get to do, do whatever you want. Yeah. You know, I think all of us, there's a part of us like, oh, it sounds so great. But then you also, when you, when you really sit with it of what it would actually entail and the level of communication, and it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of, I'm, I'm I assume over communicating. And I assume that it would come with, um, yeah, you, you almost like, you can't use it as an escapism. You have to use mm-hmm. it as what your, whatever the intention was. So yeah, it's fascinating now that it's like more of a, a thing that people are talking about. I'm always listening yeah. to those podcasts on it. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, yeah, I could do that. I could do that like 20 minutes in. And then I'm like, no, how would I remember to text the other? No, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I the- don't have time. I don't have time. I forget to text playbacks. I'm not, I'm, I'm too- <laughs> No, I couldn't do it. <laughs> there needs to be like a kit, like a starter kit. Yeah. You know, you could sell it like e-com, uh, you know, open relationship, like organizational, uh, you know, packets of, of how to keep things organized. Like phones, yeah. Yeah. To someone else too. Like, how would I memorize like his uncle's names and his family? Right. Yeah. And I got to, whose trips do I go on? Like, there's yeah. so many questions that come up and you're like, man, I can't. No. Yeah. <laughs> Navigating one relationship consciously is, that's yeah. enough for me. Like, I am fully fold, fully it's a filled. Lot of work fully filled by that. And I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't have any desire for anything else. Honestly, it's, I, I think also what it does is it inspires me as the partner to, uh, I think I, I'm very multidimensional, obviously in my career, but in my life too, right. And allowing that person to see that and vice versa, like you guys, I'm sure you have so yeah. many different layers and sides to you. And it's so much deeper than just like color your hair a different color. So he's surprised, you know? <laughs> Yeah, like, role, and, role play. Yeah. And yeah. they give that tip. They're like, wear a wig and then he'll love you again. It's like, okay, maybe. But I think it's so much deeper than that. It's like allowing them to. I think if you're if you're with an interesting person or you who yeah. you find very intriguing and interesting, mm-hmm. I, I think you you could you could do it. I think you could figure yeah. it out. I think it, it can last. You know, I think you have to be intrigued by each other. I think you have yeah. to actually think like, wow, this person's interesting. And some days I get this version of them, some days I get this version. For me, maybe it's based on my period, you know, I might be, a bit, I, might be <laughs> I might be moody and sad. I might be crazy and hyper. He doesn't know what he's saying. Yeah. So it's like, there's different facets of me. And I like, I like that about myself. And I think we should express that more. And so I think in monogamy, you get to express that and feel like, wow, I get to be this, you know, on this roller coaster and, and, and I get to see all versions of him too. So I don't know. I think if you're with someone who isn't boring and has many dimensions to them, I could see it always having a level of excitement and intrigue to it. I think it's when people married someone they didn't really like. Yeah. <laughs> then they're yeah. like, shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then it's like, well, okay, what's the plan B? How can we like still like, how can, where are the loopholes here? Yeah, yeah. totally. But and, I don't know. I'm not a relationship expert. So any, anybody listening, don't take any of this. <laughs> <advice. laughs> oh, I love it. I love um, it. Yeah. It's spot on. I yeah. We could talk to you for like three more hours. Um, yeah. But I, as we kind of, <laughs> tie this up in a bow we have some rapid fire questions we know that you're super into holistic health and biohacking and and you're super crunchy like us and you like all the things and the supplements um you know the medicine podcast is all about medicines and leaning into the medicines that help us really uh, create these conscious relationships uh we're we'd love to hear from you what feels like medicine right now for your mind body and relationships but we'll start with your body what feels like medicine right now for your body Ooh, dance class for sure mm. Mm. i started so dance class and it's like 
the greatest thing ever. I just don't think about anything else for an hour. Rad. And it's one of the only few things in life that can do that. And I'm like, this is like a drug, like, holy shit. I just feel so alive. It's so fun. I mean, you mix music and dancing and there's people you're getting like so many elements of socialization and music and movement and expression. And I'm just like, this is the best. I love this. So it's funny that I didn't even know it, but once I moved here, I started a class and it's, it's been one of my favorite things to do for my health and my mind. Mm, oh, that's rad. Love that. Yeah. That's I'm, so I'm cool. very inspired by that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, what feels like medicine for your mind? You know, what just came through is, um, boundaries and I'm working mm. on doing less and, uh, saying no more in a way where it feels, feels healthy and not feeling bad about that. And what feels like medicine for my mind is a uh, white space on my calendar. So just not mm. over committing to things socially yeah. or, mm. um, so good. Yeah. That's been hard for me as again, going back to people pleaser or wanting to do it all. Yeah. Um, but what feels good right now is less like a life of less. I want to cool. do less better. I want to have less. I just like very, I'm craving less. <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah. almost like doing less and enjoying more. Like you get to go deeper into the things that you do say hell yes to rather than just filling the white space of your calendar, just because it's there. It definitely yeah. resonates for sure. What about for your relationship with clay or your relationships in general? What feels like medicine? Yeah. I mean, we hit a bit on, on play. Uh, I've been going to the dance classes with some, some of my friends here. So that's, that's been really fun. We also started breath work together. So I'll do that with my friends and with play where um, my, my friend who is an instructor will come over and we'll do breath work sessions, which has been really nice. fun and just different. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's been really cool. And then, and then nature, you know, I think that's so cliche, but um, I love going on hikes or on walks with people. Like, let's just get outside. Like, I feel like a lot of times socially, we're always inside or eating with people. Yeah. And to me, it's like, let's not, what if we didn't have food? What if we weren't inside? What would we do? So finding activities to do outside, going to the park, going on a walk, like playing with our dogs, like finding things to do outside of always being inside and eating, I think is really healthy for, for all relationships. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Love that. Oh, so it's good. Been so fun. So fun. So good. This was yeah, pretty real. So, uh, yeah, you know, someone it. didn't like me. It's okay though. No, yeah, th it's okay. <laughs> thanks so much. Like, like, oh shit. I said too much. <laughs> no, it was perfect. No, it's a blast. Really, really appreciate your vulnerability and, and your authenticity and, uh, yeah, this has been a long time coming and, but, but worth the wait. Yeah. Wow. You're such a, you're such a beautiful example of permission and leaning into your own authenticity. And that is such medicine that the world needs right now. So you all listening, if you're not already definitely follow Angie Lee on Instagram, listen to her podcast. She puts out so much great, uh, information and content and, and where else would, where else would you like to send people if they want more of you? Yeah, you guys can go to Angie Lee Show on Instagram, Angie Lee.com, Angie Lee Show Podcast. And then to check out Soul, you guys can go to mysoulcbd.com for all the wellness goodies. And yeah, send me a DM, say hey, say what's up. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, something else that I want to just toot your horn a little bit is how much you talk about influencers, people who have any sort of platform or whatever is uh, forming relationships and answering your own DMs. Mm. And that is something that I have always done from day one. And every time I think about someone else, it feels like mm, if, it, it, even though it's time consuming, right, you know, better than anyone, it's time consuming, especially when you're, you're helping a lot of people, but I, I can't imagine myself letting that part that's so intimate to me and our brand and podcast and everything, like just putting it into someone else's hands. And I just want to thank you because you're, you're going against the grain there because everyone is looking for like, how soon can I hire someone to just double tap and heart and send people an emoji rather than a real yeah. thought out, you know, m message. And so I just want to thank you because you've, you've provided me that permission slip. I'm like, if Angie Lee can do this, I'm good. I can do this. I also love doing it. I, I think um, to me, it's community first, product second. Yeah. I love chatting with mm -hmm. people. I love meeting my community. I, I've always been like that. So for me, it's kind of like if that's how it started and that's how it's grown, I think that's important for the maintenance of it. I think oh, that right. is what it is. Even with Soul, you know, we have a product based business. It's like my obsession is I said on our marketing call the other day, I said, answer every single DM, voice them. I don't care if it's someone asking what we think is a silly question, mm -hmm. answer them. Every single one, I, it's going to yeah. seem crazy, but the brands that actually message me back when I'm like, Hey, do you have this and this size or this flavor or whatever? 
I'm like, that's awesome. Even if you're paying yeah. somebody a little bit to, to do that all day, like it's so important for marketing, like community building requires, uh, it's a symbiotic relationship. It requires conversation. And so you can't just expect people to buy a product if you're never talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm huge on that, whether it's a, a personal brand or a physical product. Like I, I love encouraging people to like get in there, answer every comment, answer every DM. Uh, but yeah, some big brands don't do it anymore. I was, I was buying from a brand the other day and I DM'd him a few times and I'm like, darn, I've spent so much money on this brand. Like what is happening? And I, they won't, they won't even answer. Mm. I'm like, That's crazy. That's sad. I want to tell them like, Hey, feedback, just yeah. somebody to answer them, please. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I, I love that about you. And, and, uh, we're so, we're so grateful to know you in this life and to call you friend and, uh, just happy that you, uh, and grateful that you got to, or that that you got to come on and just share with our audience, the real you. That's what we wanted. You guys are awesome. This was so good. One of my favorite interviews. Of oh, good. And awesome. I want more of this stuff. Yes. 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 Much love. You will be on our list. We will keep you stocked girl. No worries. All right, you guys, thank you so much for showing up. You could have been listening to any podcast anywhere. We are so grateful for every listen, every share. If you loved it, Send it to someone you love, your sister, your cousin, your neighbor, whoever, or share it to your Instagram story. We appreciate you so much. We'll talk to you next time. Go spread some light. Bye.